Uh, my name is Becky Rice, and um, first thing I got to tell you is I have a coworker named Dan Woldridge. He's right over there. And uh, before I ever give any speech or anything, he always says I got to tell people where my stupid accent's from, or they're not going to listen to me. But he's from St. Louis, and y'all say Warsh and stuff like that. But um, <laughs> which I don't get. I say Wash. Um, but yes, I'm from Kentucky, but now I live in Ohio, and I'm proud to say that I work for White Castle with my boss and coworker John Kelly, who is helping me over here on the side. Hello, John. Waved to everybody. <laughs> okay, today we're going to talk about some stuff that's kind of out of the box. So I want you guys, are you ready to be out of the box a little bit? Okay. Um, I've had a lot of careers in my life, and one of those was a high school biology teacher. So, yes, um, glad to be out of that. Um, but one of the things that I did as a high school biology teacher was implement something called discrepant events. Has anybody ever heard of discrepant events? A couple of you? Okay, so discrepant events are, see if I have a, do I have a PowerPoint? <laughs> Don't click anymore? Oh, I clicked too much. <laughs> oh, I clicked too much. Okay, there it is. Okay, so yes, a discrepant event is something that's puzzling and something that um, leaves the learner with wanting to learn more. So something happens and they're like, what? Okay, and they're like, what is that? And how, you know, I want to learn more. I want to learn more. And so I was like, heck, I'm a corporate trainer, but I can still use this, I think. Um, so yes, I did have to reach a little bit, but once I started doing it, I was like, this is awesome. Okay, so like it says here, it's a puzzling happening, it's a surprising phenomenon, it's an unexpected turn of events, it causes the observer to wonder why the event occurred as it did, it leaves the observer at a momentary or longer loss to explain what has taken place, and it is almost always science-based. Okay, so why would we want to use discrepant events? First of all, they engage the participant. I use a discrepant event in absolutely every single one of my presentations, okay? Um, they motivate the participant to learn, because like I said, they want that, what, how did that happen? What, I need more. Tell me more. Um, they give credibility to the presenter. This is kind of the thing that I like the best, because if I'm teaching something and it's just very, very boring, and then I throw out a discrepant event, they're like, she's so awesome! <laughs> you know, I just love her. Um, even if they just hated what I was talking about. But that'll help them remember as well. Um, they help participants make analogies and connections to the content you are learning. So in a minute, you're going to see that I'm going to make kind of an analogy to one of the um, discrepant events that we're going to do, or like a connection. And hopefully that's going to spark um, when they're showing their friend the discrepant event or they're remembering back on the discrepant event. It will help them to remember the actual content that I was trying to teach them in the first place as well. Um, they help participants see things differently. Okay? We all talk about in our classes how we have to connect that learning to something that they know already, and this discrepant event may be that um, bridge that we need for that connection. And they make otherwise boring presentations fun and exciting. Okay? But you're thinking to yourself, but I don't teach science. Okay? There's a ton of books out there about discrepant events, and they, some of them have to do with chemicals that you have to buy and dry ice and all kinds of different explosions and things like that. Okay, I'm not asking you to do those discrepant events, but if you can find the discrepant events that would work for you in your classrooms and um, wherever you're teaching, those are the ones I want you to use. Discrepant events, although they're usually presented to teach uh, science topics, can be used in all different kinds of learning situations. And this is where we kind of have to think out of the box. Um, I actually used a discrepant event in my interview with White Castle. Um, I don't know what John and Linda thought about it, but I got the job, <laughs> so that's okay. That's good. Um, and I actually, I guess I didn't ask for permission when I decided to use started using discrepant events in my presentations, but they have been so graciously um, allowing me to use these in my presentations, and I really appreciate that. So, um, so what else can they teach? And this is where, why I brought that up. I think John and Linda have finally seen, you know, what I'm doing does actually make sense um, in the workforce that we have. So um, the things that aren't always what, or what else can we teach from discrepant events? That things aren't always what they seem. 
Also, that you may not always have adequate information to make informed decisions. And that's kind of the yucky thing about discrepant events, right? Because sometimes when they happen, you're just like, I want to know more. And I'm just like, nah, see ya. <laughs> and I don't ever tell them. But that's great because then they may go out and try to do the research on their own, which is great. Um, various leadership skills, so time management, feedback mechanisms, motivation techniques, and teamwork, and then expectations, whether you have too high ones or too low ones. Um, we have, the one I did during my interview was about how many drops you can put on a penny. Has anybody ever done that one? Uh, yes, okay, so, um, oh yes, Kelly, you have. <laughs> um, so if you get a penny, this is just one I'll tell you about. If you get a penny and you ask somebody, how many drops of water uh, do you think you can put on this penny? Just throw out some numbers. How many drops of water do you think you can put on a penny? A hundred. Wow, Gabe. Okay. <laughs> what did you say? Two? Okay. Three, six? Fifteen. Twenty. Okay. Um, well, actually, if you do this, and this is something, this is a discrepant event you can do in one of your training classes. Um, if you actually do it, and really if you get a pipette, which is one of those really cool science uh, droppers, you can get, like Gabe said, over a hundred drops on a penny. And it's really cool if you look to it at the side, it's like all bubbled up, okay? Because water has some amazing uh, properties. But the, the awesome thing you can take back from that is we can accomplish so much more when we stick together. Or your ex expectations were kind of low, you know? Don't be that way. Keep your expectations high in your team members. Okay, so there's all kinds of things that out of the box you can think of. But when people go back and they're showing their mom or they're showing their sister, they, they'll be like, oh, yeah, we learned that we can be a team because just like water, we can all stick together. Does everybody see that, how that connection is? Okay, so overall, discrepant events help make connections and analogies between the participants' real life and what you're teaching them. And that's what it's all about, okay? So just forget the science part of it and just think out of the box and how it can be um, used in your classroom. All right, so it's time to try for you. Are you excited? Yeah. yeah, okay. John Kelly, are you ready? Okay. All right, the first one we're going to show you is called the Toothpick Star. And you, if you want to replicate this at home, what you need is you need um, some round toothpicks. So don't get the flat ones, okay? Get the round toothpicks. You also need some type of dropper. Um, it can be, that's a pipette that John has right there. You can get these like at um, a biological supply store. You can get like 100 of them for like $10 or something. And so once again, Linda was gracious enough to let me get some of these. So, you know, just talk to people and, uh, in your department and see if they'd be interested in this. What are you laughing about, Linda? <laughs> You're like, I didn't know she bought those. Where's, where's Josh? Expense it, <laughs> right? Um, so, yes, yeah, so that's a pipette, but you can also use like the little droppers that your kids get in their medicine, and you can also use even a straw. Oh, did he already do it? John. <laughs> Okay, so la 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 la. So you break the you break the toothpicks in half, but not all the way. And then you put them in a sunburst configuration. Then you add four drops, or just if you're using a straw, just use one drop, and you'll see what happens. Did everybody see that, or does John need to do it again? <laughs> okay, do it again, John. <laughs> Okay, while he breaks the toothpicks, we'll do it again real quick. Um, but you'll see down there in the bottom, I've got that one already broken for you. So you want to break it in half, but not all the way. But one thing you need to tell your people is that they have to push the legs together. Because some people, they'll be like, oh, I barely broke it. Yeah, I did it. But no, that's not, they need to break it all the way and, and uh, push the legs together. And then you'll put them in that sunburst configuration and then put the drop in there. The reason that that works is because of a couple of properties of water that I'll run through real quick. Um, cohesion, which is where water molecules stick together. And then also capillary action, where they want to, um, water molecules want to travel up a narrow tube. This is another thing you can do with your restaurants. Have you ever made a soda before? Put the top on, put the straw in, and a little bit of Coke comes up the straw, and you're like, what, how's that doing that? Well, that's because of capillary action of the water. So um, were these toothpicks alive or dead? They're dead, right? Were they ever alive? 
Yes, they were part of a tree. So inside there, there are little empty cells. And so when you put the water inside of the middle, oh, are you about to do it, John? Okay, here we go. We are in the voodoo world, right? I am all putting a hex on you. Good job. Okay, so the, the water molecules want to go up into those empty cells and the other ones follow them and they want to go up the narrow tube and then they get there and ladies, what happens when we um, get full of water? No offense, we get bloated, right? <laughs> and um, so those, the toothpicks um, hit up against each other like this and push the toothpicks away, and that's what makes the star, okay? So what I say um, to my, you're like, how, how did you ever, you know, use this in White Castle? Well, the way I do this is with my certified trainer class. At the end of my certified trainer class, I say, we all do this. They all do it, not just me. They all do it. And... Uh, of course, they're like, no, oh, look at that. You know, they're just freaking out. And um, I'm the coolest person ever, really. But um, after that, um, I tell them why it happened, but then I tell them, why am I showing you this? And I say, well, first of all, it's really cool. The second reason is I used to be a high school biology teacher, and I love science, and so it has to be in every part of my presentation. And the third reason I tell you, and the most important, is because I want, or were these alive or dead? You all said dead, right? Uh, what brought these toothpicks to life? The water. So I want you guys to be the water that brings your team members to life and makes them stars. Okay? So that's how I do that one. And then um, we'll show you one more real quick, and that's the magic flame. <clears throat> and John has just a regular pillar candle here. We have been having it lit for quite a bit of time here. Um, so that it's good and um, got a lot of wax and different things like that. And what's going to happen is um, John is going to blow out the candle, and then he is going to light the candle by not touching the wick. He's going to do that a second time because it didn't work. Did you do it that time? I couldn't see. Okay, I thought so. Okay, so this is the magic flame. And what this is, is that um, the smoke that comes off of the candle actually has little bits of wax in it. Okay? And so when he holds that lighter into the smoke trail, the flame hits those wax pieces and travels back down to the wick and lights the wick. Okay? So already, are you all thinking of some ways that you could use this in your classrooms? Great, okay? Hopefully you've thought that um, you can spark another person, okay? Um, if they're feeling real negative and can't, you know, don't have any ideas and things like that, you can be the flame that gets that spark going. Um, also, uh, what, did, what did you say, John? Something about... Right, so this would be um, something also maybe with um, change management um, you could use or also with motivating um, employees. And this is something that they'll probably remember. And hopefully they'll be like, you know, I can be the flame that gets everybody um, excited and pumped up in their work. But I really like the, the fact that he said, you know, if there's some remnants and some smoke that's there and you just know it's there, then you can be the, the flame that gets that spark going. So that's about it. There's a, there's, like I said, there's a bunch of resources online that you can use. Um, just look up discrepant events and see what you can find out. But that's my little uh, training bit today, so I hope you enjoyed it. Yeah.